Well, it's May 9th. Yeah, it's snow. Let's get back to it. We're guiding automobiles, yeah. Well, it's exactly where I left it. I haven't touched it since. Goal today is to get the transmission off. Take a look. Uh, one of the things we did try is uh, turning the engine by hand, like just putting a socket on and trying to turn it by hand. It's a no-go, so something is definitely seized in there. Uh, whether I'll get the engine up on a stand, because uh, I don't really know how to do that, and opened up today, I don't know, but uh, we'll give it a try. Oh, shit. Okay. That is one transmission removed. That's what the clutch looks like at the moment. And this is the inside of the transmission. So here's the actual clutch itself. Doesn't look too bad. I don't really know what it looks like. I mean, it looks pretty worn to me, but I have to look at a, a new one to tell. And then the flywheel, which I've already also taken off. Okay, so I don't know everything I need to take out or take off of it in order to get it up on the engine stand. Uh, the, the holes are there, it looks like. Um, but for sure, I'm gonna take off like the oil filter housing, uh, probably the supercharger, alternator. Uh, and we'll figure, I guess I should unplug the, all the coils and everything. We'll see, let's keep going at it. Bunch of metal filings in that hole, which I assume is just something over tightened or I don't, I don't really know what causes that, but it's in there. So something to remind myself to look into. So something pointed out to me when Spurious Studio was here last is that uh, this alternator is probably supposed to spin freely and it doesn't at all. Uh, so maybe just because it hasn't been used in a while or maybe because it's actually dead. And I will add it to the suspect list, how's that? Okay, new day. I've taken a lot of stuff already a lot of stuff off the engine already, but I think before I do anything else, I want to put it up on the stand. So the stand I built just now, uh, I looked online for what bolts you needed to mount the engine stand to the actual engine. Um, M100, or sorry, M10s is what I found. Uh, I went and bought some. 
Uh, those are not correct. M12 is what you need. Uh, so there's some slots here, one, two, three, four. Now, earlier I mentioned that that one hole uh, actually was quite sort of, uh, I don't know, it was full of filings. So I don't remember ever, I don't remember having a huge problem getting it off, but I guess we'll check the tape. Um, but yeah, it's not, every other, every other one I can just, you know, I was just testing them so I can easily put them in or I can easily thread them in. Uh, this one I can't. This one stops about a half a turn in. Uh, so that's the bottom right one. So I don't really know what to do here, so I'm just going to consult with Spiria Pseudo. Uh, I do have a tap and die set that I bought, but I've never used it before. Um, but also there's another hole right here that maybe I can use. So we'll see. So here I am just putting the engine stand supports wherever I could get them. And uh, it was enough to get it up on the stand and do a little work, uh, but I'd have to change them later. Okay, now it is level. It is level now, so let's do that again. Bolts that came with it. Super hand tight to uh, whoever did the transmission before me. I think over tightened the one bolt and therefore to strip. So I'm using a gap, a hole here, and another hole here. These are M12s with an M12 nut, uh, 120 mil. Uh, these are all great. Well, the ones I bought are all 8.8. Uh, those are as tight as I can get them. This one and this one are M12 100s. Uh, they are actually in the housing or in the block. Uh, and again, I don't want to over tighten them. So they're just pretty tight. I think it's one want them pretty low. So it's level. We're good. I've got my mounts on. I'm ready to lift it to put it on the stand. Let's get to it. Okay. The engine is now completely supported by the engine stand. Who knew that was going to take two hours? <laughs> oh man. You know, considering how huge this thing is, not bad actually, the way it tucks away. Once it was up on the stand, I wanted to get the fuel rail out, the injectors and the intake manifold. And all the tutorials tell me two bolts and the fuel rail comes out and all of the injectors come with it. In my case, of course, uh, they were stuck. They would not budge. I had to pry each one out individually. Here's what they look like. Uh, to me, they look like complete garbage. And you know we're in it now, so I might as well just order new injectors. So new injectors are part of the new package. And for your viewing pleasure, we can share in my frustration. Maybe the fuel rail comes separate. But in the video, he just pulls them all at the same time. I think this is just shitty and stuck like everything else. Up next was the intake manifold. And uh, as you can probably guess, uh, once I unbolted it, it would not budge. I hit it with a rubber mallet, I was pulling on it. Uh, so I decided, I got one side loose and I decided I was gonna try and get a pry bar in there and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Oh, f <sighs> well, the one so this happened. You see that? That is the intake manifold. 
I hope these aren't expensive. Uh. I immediately went to eBay, ended up ordering one for $40 US, uh, so it ends up being not that bad, even though I'm clearly very frustrated. Some reinforcements arrived, and Spurious Pseudo showed up to show me how to actually put the engine on the stand properly, uh, because we wanted to spin it over, and he wanted to be there when I opened it up and saw what was we assumed would be bad news when we took off the oil pan. There we go, there we go. Look at Spinning the engine. Whoa. It's just too late now, isn't it? Oh, it's a miracle. <laughs> it's a miracle it all came off. All right, so now just give it a little tappy tap. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> oh my, what the f is that? <laughs> <laughs> the f oh is my that? god, that something got eaten. What is it? What is it? <laughs> Did you get this? Yeah, it dude. looks like a weird pizza. Do you have a magnet on a stick or anything? I got a little magnet right here, but where's that? Uh, that is bizarre. <laughs> here, here's just like a random magnet I have. What the f? It's like plastic? I don't know what that is. What could it possibly be? <gasps> Something's gotten eaten here. Oh, timing chain. Oh, it's the timing chain, like the bottom of the guide. <laughs> oh my God, that's all up in there. <laughs> like all these little bits. Mm -hmm. So what, the timing chain. Yeah, but that might mean the rest of it's okay. Yeah, like the timing chain blew off. And it seized it and the rest could be. Fine. But, it's, but this stuff would be all in it. Well. It sounds like when it stopped, it stopped real fast. Yeah, it did. It did stop dead. That one doesn't feel bad. Oh, there's something. See this? That's how, how it should, should be. be. Yeah. <laughs> Aluminum everywhere. Yeah. We should probably get a container for that. Here, look. The oil pan's full <laughs> Well, the oil pickup will go too, because that's the, the thing I'll definitely replace. Oh, it was doing its job. Where's your, did you take the filter off already? Uh, the oil filter? Yeah. It's still in the, it's in the housing, wherever I put it. <clears throat> you should cut it apart and see what's in there. Yeah. Well, we know it's in there. It's, this, this has been in uh, one of Mod Mini's videos. He, uh, he basically said, if something goes wrong, I think it has something to do with the timing chain or the tensioner breaks, the bottom of where the chain goes, where the chain guy goes, explodes and ends up in little bits in your oil pan. This is exactly, this is exactly what he's talking about. It's kind of <laughs> not bad though. Like if you if can this free is a it up. If this is a bolt-on part, that would mean, so I guess if this whole... Yeah, the whole yeah, front cover comes okay. out. We'll still have to pull it apart and pull all the shit out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you might get away with just new bearings and like a quick hone, and you're back to. This is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> that seems like a lot for that little thing. Like it's got some movement. Yeah. So it's not welded. Oh yeah, there it goes. This one's got movement too, but but what in the world has seized that up so tight? Is the... Well, I assume. But okay, so oh, oh. there's some bad stuff over there. There it is. There's a piece jammed in there. You can see something jammed. Maybe this is the one that welded up, and it's a different color. Why is it a different color? You'll see it's welded. Oh, it is welded. All right, so this is just a good view. Um, are they lettered or numbered? So down into the engine. So there's obviously the the bottom of the timing chain is exploded. 
Um, so these are what journals, right? So these are the, sorry, these down here. Uh, so that this one's sort of like a bronze gray, I guess with the oil on it. This one is very similar. So is this one. And this one is black. <laughs> so what it like, I've never seen that in any of the videos I've watched. And if I go around, I'm going to try and get a good shot of this. It looks welded in. My hands are not steady here. It looks kind of welded to the, oh shit. Welded in place. Anyway, I'm not sure if you can see that. So I don't know why it's black. It's not looking good, but we'll dig into it. All right, so we're gonna try and turn it by hand. And nothing. <laughs> you got the bolt free, huh? The bolt is free. So that's the one advantage to our engine seizing. It makes the bolt <laughs> extremely <laughs> easy to pull out. So I had just replaced the timing chain tensioner, which meant means the tensioner wasn't the issue that one of the other pieces failed. Like one of the guides, I'm assuming. So the thing you touched last broke. <laughs> blew up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's literally the thing I was like, I'm going to fix this before the, like before the, whatchamacallit, the track day or whatever. Like there's a video of it, so I can't deny it. <laughs> <laughs> i have to go back and watch your video. Well, it's literally, it's this bolt comes out, you put a new piece in and you put, and you put it back in. That's it. That's all I did. It takes 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I guess I could have put it in backwards. Seems unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> As I was editing the video, my comments about maybe I put the uh, timing chain tensioner in backwards uh, sort of haunting me. So I'm editing the video right now. I'm just going to, for you, take it out live uh, and see to make sure that it was in right. So I was pretty confident <laughs> that that couldn't go in backwards, but I just want to make sure. Uh, and if anything, it would have been, if it was broken, it would have been stuck on the in position, which it wasn't. So um, that is not the issue. Conscience cleared. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, we got a lot of work done, but I have to admit, as I'm editing the video, uh, the frustration and the anger <laughs> that you see in the video, I live it again. Uh, so it's all part of the learning process. Um, you know, it's fine. Uh, I hope you got a few laughs out of it um, because I, I laugh and cringe when I watch it, but uh, that's for your entertainment. Um, big thanks to Spiria Sudo. Uh, as always, he helped me out, uh, showed me a bunch of things, even off camera about how to take this stuff apart and what I should be watching for. Unfortunately, the percentage chance of getting this car back on the road before the end of summer uh, is dropping. <laughs> it's quite low. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best to try and get it back on the road. I'll keep pushing towards that, keep pulling it apart, seeing what I can salvage. And uh, I'll keep making videos as long as you keep watching. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.